The USA is the child of Europe. It has also become a melting pot of non-Christian culture. The rise and decline of Christianity in the U.S. can be understood on both accounts. Today's Europe is far less religious than the U.S., and a reason for this may be the checkered history of European Christianity, in which much of faith was once the whim of monarchical rule or papal overreach. People in Europe will recall their holy wars, whereas in America and the creation of its religious identity, religious freedom won the day. The Statue of Liberty symbolizes the Enlightenment value for freedom, including religious freedom, and the freedom to not be religious at all. This liberty of choice has both contributed to this rise and decline. In section 3 of our text, Nickens points out the intellectual developments in Europe beginning in the 17th century, which contributed to the decline of Christianity in the U.S. Rationalism, which saw the individual and reason as the seat of all knowledge in which humanity was perfectible by using its own reason, self-reliance as the best gauge for truth apart from institution, the elevation of the importance of the individual above that of God, and a distrust or disbelief in divine inspiration of Scripture, the historical critical method of interpreting or reinterpreting Scripture. In section 4 of our text, Nickens points out similar developments in 20th century America, such as the rise of liberalism, the modern interpretation as opposed to a more traditional one. For many in the U.S. today, intellectualism is an impediment to faith, while for others, advances in scholarship have increased the sturdiness of one's faith and the reliability of Scripture. Other isms of our day include scientism, the extreme of which sees science as the only road to absolute truth, secularism, which tends to push faith to the outskirts of public life, atheism, the purely materialistic or naturalistic view of life, which can lead to nihilism, a pessimistic view of life, which provides life no meaning, no meaning to love or suffering, multiculturalism, the influx of non-Christians or non-Westerners into the U.S., we can see a range of attitudes that reflect the decline and rise of Christianity in the U.S. Some today may be overwhelmed by Christianity, unsure how the ancient world relates to our own, uncertain of the sovereignty of a Jewish God in a world of plurality. Some may be disillusioned by religion, while others simply do not wish to affiliate with one. Some may be non-religious, even while they know that there is something to it. In today's information age, pseudo-history and sensationalism can dissuade some from a truer understanding of Christianity, such as misnomers about the Council of Nicaea conspiring to exclude non-canonical books from the Bible, as opposed to what we've studied about in the natural outgrowth of scriptural canonization then affirmed at Hippo and Carthage. Some today liken Christianity to the ancient myths, whereas a student of history like Clive Staples Lewis likens the ancient myths to a foreshadowing of the true myth, the actual incarnation of God, recorded in scripture. Some may blame Christian society for perpetuating slavery, while others recognize that Christians like William Wilberforce were the ones to abolish it, that the Christian West was the first civilization to ever abolish slavery. Christianity and its rise can be seen as the ongoing stabilizing force in the U.S., the nation's secret strength, holding back darkness through the power of prayer, charity, love, love of family and community, great accomplishments, a godly work ethic, the diligence of the upright to keep in check the empire of our time. At a lecture at Labrie, Rochester, scholar John Hodges reflects how the barbarians of the medieval period overthrew Christendom, but a thousand years later were converted to the faith they conquered. Hodges posits a similar result in the apparent decline of Christianity in the West today, that in the long run, Christianity conquers what seems to conquer it. Writer Alton Gansky points out that the church has always done its best under duress. Light growing lighter as dark grows darker, the separation of wheat and tares, theosis, our transformation into the image of God, becoming like Christ. Believers in the USA haven't always realized what they have, this power of the Spirit that rises up in the believer, and the conflict of life and death already on our shore and in every heart. As Proverbs 4.18 says, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter under the full light of day. The enduring strength of Christian influence in the U.S. can be summed up with what Puritan clergy used to inspire in their congregations. The beauty of unity, of order found in nature, society, and in God. In 1832, in his History of the United States, Noah Webster wrote this. He said, All the miseries and evils which men suffer from vice, crime, ambition, injustice, oppression, slavery, and war, 
proceed from their despising or neglecting the precepts contained in the Bible. And that right there attests to both the rise and decline of Christianity in the U.S.